outer space. The universe, the endless unknown, the final frontier as some people would call it. Whilst it is beautiful, it can also be truly terrifying. Over the last year or so, we've discussed a wide range of threats out there, from black holes, solar flares, coronal mass ejections, and even super flares. And don't forget starquakes on magnetars. However, there is one threat I haven't covered, which trumps all of these. Gamma ray bursts. What if I told you supernovas are not the brightest events in the entire universe? They will outshine all stars in their parent galaxy, fair enough. But gamma ray bursts? These things are hundreds of times brighter and will only last a few minutes. They are the most violent explosions in the universe. They occur when the biggest stars out there run out of fuel, causing their cores to collapse in on itself and explode forming a black hole as opposed to a neutron star. They can also occur when two neutron stars collide, or if a black hole consumes a neutron star. There's a 50% chance that planet Earth has been struck by one of these in the last 500 million years, causing one of the major mass extinction events, the Ordovician Silurian event, 450 million years ago, before the first dinosaurs walked the Earth. Much like with magnetars and starquakes, Gamma ray bursts, it depends on how far away they are from you. Let's say one occurs two to 4,000 light years away. We would be pretty safe and comfy down here on the surface. The Earth would absorb most of the radiation. Satellites, however, different story. Some of them will be knocked down temporarily, some will be knocked down permanently, and some will be just completely destroyed, which would disrupt your internet connection. So on the one hand, you wouldn't be able to doom scroll on TikTok at 11 o'clock at night getting worked up about nuclear war anymore. It wouldn't take long for us to replace those satellites and you'd get your connection back. So you'd be able to resume doom scrolling after a few weeks, maybe months of peace, carry on tagging me in videos and asking me to calm you down. Now, if the gamma ray burst was to happen, say, oh, I don't know, around 600 light years away, somewhere in the constellation Orion, around the area of a somewhat famous red supergiant star, it's the current favourite for the next supernova visible from Earth, then we've got a serious problem on our hands if we're in the firing line. The radiation raining down on Earth would obliterate the ozone layer. I'm not talking about a silly little hole that happened a few years ago, I'm talking obliterating it completely to the point where it doesn't exist anymore. A large chunk, if not all, of our plant species would drop dead, which would then trigger a breakdown of photosynthesis, which would then cause a lot of animals to drop dead as well, and then cause major problems for us because there's a lack of oxygen and a lack of food. If it was to happen any closer than that, you might as well be hit by a killer asteroid. It would destroy the atmosphere entirely. The atmosphere would be destroyed completely, making the Earth no different to the Moon or Mercury an airless ball of rock. It wouldn't be over a long period of time either. It's a blink and you're gone situation. However, don't get freaked out. Whilst the gamma ray burst does release more energy than the sun will in its entire lifetime in just a few minutes, sleep easy tonight knowing this. In order for any of these effects to truly take place, Earth would need to be in the firing line of one of these two beams. It's not like a ray gun either. They are very narrow beams, don't get me wrong, but just a few seconds of arc width travelling at a few light years, it'll be wider than the planet's diameter. You have to be in the firing line, essentially. And the same is the case for Betelgeuse. Though Betelgeuse may be massive, it's not the biggest star that we know of. Far from it. So the chances of it having a gamma ray burst are very slim. And even if it did, we would have to be in the firing line of the jets. But at the same time, just because the jets aren't directly facing you, doesn't mean you're completely safe. You want to be as far away from these things as possible, and they're very unlikely to happen. Just because a cosmic event exists in space, it doesn't mean that the Earth is destined to be hit by one. 500 million years is a long time, and we've only had one in that instance. So the odds of one realistically happening are very slim. It's also worth remembering just how big space is. It is really hard for people to comprehend, fair enough. But here's a picture of Earth taken by Voyager 1 over 3.7 billion kilometres away. We really are an insignificant cosmic body in terms of the size of the universe. A lot of empty space. And when you consider just how big everything is, the odds of us being hit by a thin beam, your odds of winning the lottery look a lot more favourable.